take this time to welcome you all back to my channel. I am the host John Shaft and this is my C7 Corvette Channel. So if you ever wonder how a uh, Corvette was made or how the uh, Corvette plant function we're going to be examining that question in this video. So you're looking at on the screen, the assembly plant in Bowling Green, Kentucky, the Corvette, the Corvette assembly plant in Bowling Green, Kentucky. As they assemble, produce, and manufacture the Chevrolet Corvette. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the build of America's favorite car, the Corvette. Well, again, I am the host, John Schaff, and this is my C7 Corvette channel. And I'd like to welcome you all back to another episode. And again, you look at on the screen, the build and manufacturing of the Chevy Corvette. And that can say his ownership like owning a Corvette. Stop dreaming and start driving your new Corvette. I am also the owner of one of these beautiful machineries. I have a 2016 C7 Corvette Stingray. So if you ever wonder how they built these beautiful cars, here you go. And I ask you to hit the like button, share button, and subscribe to my channel. And hit the notification button so you will know when I am doing a upload. And again, you're viewing another episode of 
Marcy Seven for the channel. That can say his own shield live, the Chevy Corvette. And we are all now anticipating the arrival, manufacturing, and production of the C8 Z06. We are currently looking at on the screen the production of the C7, which is what I am. Many of you may not have the opportunity to visit the Corvette Museum or uh, visit the Corvette uh, plant. So I am bringing that opportunity to you through my videos. And again, I am the host, John Shaft. Uh, you select different modes that you want your vehicle to be in. You got uh, sports modes, which is what I I personally drive in all the time, which is sports mode. You have the economy mode, sports mode. You have track mode. Or, uh, let's see, sports mode, economy mode, track mode. Uh, and economy. No, I think I think I said that one. Let me let me see. See if I'm missing something. Yeah, touring. You got touring mode. Yeah, so you got you got touring mode, sports mode, track mode, and weather mode. I hope you guys can see that. Now you have to ignore that uh, tire pressure. Uh, that tire pressure ad thing that you that you see uh, on my uh, on my screen now. Uh, there's nothing wrong with, with my uh, tire pressure. I got brand new tires on here, <laughs> and that's that's another thing too, guy. When you change out your tires on your vehicle, you need to change out your uh, change out your sensors on each on each tire or each wheel. You change out the sen the sensor. Uh, if you don't, then you're gonna always have this uh uh this this uh uh display on your uh, dashboard telling you that your uh, uh PSIs are, are low. All right now I'm saying my PSI is seven is uh seventeen. And I know my uh I know my tie back there ain't no seventeen, it's it's got it has like thirty let's see, I think it has like thirty four Okay, well it's thing it's still saying 17 as you can see. But well, see that's that's incorrect. That's incorrect. And the reason I know it's incorrect <laughs> is because of uh if I had 17 pounds of air back there, my tire would be almost flat. And that tire is standing up just like the rest of them standing up. So I know that's the sensor, that sensor probably need to be need to be changed. And like I say, every time you are Every time you change your tires, you need to change the sensor too uh, in your uh, in your vehicle. But getting back to the mode mode selector, you have uh, weather mode, you have track mode when you want to go on the track, you have sports mode, you have touring mode, and you have economy mode. 
Now, when the weather is bad outside and it's wet and stuff like that, you definitely want to be in weather mode. Uh, that helps you keep the vehicle in control. And all, you no, know, even though you have that engaged to keep you uh, keep the vehicle in control, you can push the vehicle beyond its limit. Now, you know what limit that is? I don't, I don't personally, I don't even know. I don't even know. Uh, and the reason I said that is because uh, I had mine engaged and I was in a bad storm and an 18 wheeler uh, came, 18 wheeler drove past me and I was only doing like 61, 62 miles an hour. And when he come around me, all the force, the terrific force that came with it. hit my car and caused me to go into a spin even though I had my car in the weather mode I went into a spin I'm talking about 360 not once not twice not even three times probably I think it was about four times I went for a ride guys I went for a ride and uh uh, there was no damages or anything like that like that uh to my vehicle uh once it came to rest well man i was, I was so i was so afraid that i had uh torn up my vehicle but the only thing i had the only thing that was wrong with it is just uh mud everywhere but i did kind of i did kind of have a little damage up on the uh undercarriage from the front end i did have a little damage up on up on there but uh, that's 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 about it, and uh, yeah, I, I probably need to go and, and get that uh, uh, get that replaced too, cause I um, mean, even now then I still kind of like have a little a little problem with the, the uh, with the uh, undercarriage. And when you have a car like this, man, you don't you don't want no no problems with it, you know. But but that's but anything man made, you gonna you gonna have problems with it. No matter, no matter how no matter how you how you take care of it. if you don't want nothing to happen to it then you just uh, be like all the rest of you guys and girls I see out there and just keep yours at home in the garage but if you if you drive it man you know you know something something gonna happen uh and even if you just going down the highway and you you run over something and take out some tires I don't have stuff like that to happen and uh yeah, it's, it's just something, you know, with these cars, man. You know, you have an amazing blind spot, too, uh, with these cars. And you, you can't see uh, uh, properly as, as you could in a, in a normal uh, in a normal normal vehicle. Okay, now the different driving mode. Uh, if you put your vehicle in track mode and you hit this. Let's, let me start it back up. You hit this twice. Hold on, I didn't get it again. Put in track mode. Track mode. You hit this twice. I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you guys see it again. Okay, I'm gonna hit it twice. Okay, now you see you see uh, track mode. I mean, uh, traction is is off, and you see stability is off. Both of those are off. All right, this is what you call competitive competitive mode uh, when somebody is trying to challenge you. Now you have the full power and full operation of this vehicle in your hands just by you doing that uh if, if somebody's trying to challenge you and that's within track mode again you hit this twice and that puts it in put the vehicle in challenging mode uh but that but but it only it goes only only in track now it goes only in challenging mode if you got 
if you are in track mode. Any other mode is not gonna is not gonna do that. Only in track mode. And uh, be careful if you do that, especially if it's raining outside. You don't want it to be rain outside and put your vehicle in, in that mode. You're asking for trouble because the full power and full weight and, and uh, speed and all that stuff is in, is in your hand. Trash, trash control, your ability to keep this vehicle under control, that's all in your hands. And your car can become a missile if you don't know what you're doing. And you can tear something up. You don't you don't want to do that. You can tell your car. <laughs> yeah, like I said, your car can become a missile. It, you know, and it, these cars are very 